In the world of Piro, there are a lot of controversies that make it stateside for many reasons, one of the main ones becoming the language barrier. For better or worse, this builds a sort of myth around English-speaking forms that Japanese wrestling is free of the usual issue you see so regularly. Be it petty drama or actual backstage fights, it's just not something that the English audience hears much about. The topic today is an example of just how much can be hidden simply through no one being willing to translate the incident to share at the masses. The Muda era of All Japan Pro Wrestling was monumental for many reasons. It was a game changing era that saw him basically save the roster by leaving his longtime home of New Japan to become the president of its top rival that was on the brink of closing his doors. With Muda essentially taking the position of Giant Baba in the company, many expected changes, and they certainly got exactly that. Immediately, the sports-based presentation was given an overall accommodation to the sports entertainment-oriented Muda. Part of this overhaul was the introduction of a new group. The Voodoo Murderers would come together shortly after Muda took over the helm of the company, led by a man, Taru. This group was initially followed by Gaji performers coming through the company with a core group of native wrestlers that Taru would lead. They were the top heel faction in the company for many years. With this formula, this is similar to what we see with Bullet Club throughout the 2010s. Taru and company would hold the position of top heels for a very long time and seemed like they would become a staple that people would still be talking about today, as one of the top heel staples of the 2000s with alumni such as Rene Dupree, Lance Cade, Giant Bernard aka A-Train or Albert, Lance Archer, Viscera, Satoshi Kojima, D'Lo Brown, Silver King, and many others. It seems like this is the group that you would hear about much more often than you do. There is a reason, but it's the reason that is pretty much kept secret from non-native audiences. Um, there was a bit of incident. Tarun, right? I hope I pronounced that right. They had the fight backstage. How did you know about that? Yeah, is that on the internet? I can't believe that got out. Wow, that got on the internet? So you tell us about it. You got the full story. Yeah, I was there. Much of what we will discuss today is translated from news at the time and will be helped along by Rene Dupree's first-hand account of witnessing the incident. Oh, you know, he was a great guy. He's actually, he, you know who broke his arm once in a match? It was Chris Jericho. Really? Yeah. I think it was after a lion salt or something, he broke his arm, yeah. But he died second generation. Right. Father was a wrestler. Really good. Super Hate, who was a member of the Voodoo Murders at the time and seemed to have finally hit his stride after a few name changes and landing in the faction, had gone from putting up zero points in the tournaments to now being part of a unit that would see him wins time to time and even made an, an honest run at the Junior Heavyweight Championship held by Kaz Hayashi. By early 2011, he was in a tag team and looking to make new waves in the Junior Tag Team ranks. However, that would all come to a halt on May 29th, 2011. Okay, what'd you hear? I was there. I was there when it happened. Well, I heard they had a fight, and Hirai suffered a stroke because of it. That led towards Muta leaving all Japan, and Fudu Murders disbanded. Well, not disbanded, but all the Japanese time yeah. got disbanded it, 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 from Fudu yeah. Murders. Uh, that's, what killed, that's what killed the Voodoo Murders, yeah. yeah. Super Heat collapsed during an interview after a match at the Kobe tournament on May 29th and underwent immediate brain surgery. Immediately after the match, it is said that things became very bad, very quickly. Her eye who was held backstage immediately vomited. When brought back out, he said, I feel sick because I was beaten, my head hurts, and lost consciousness. Most of those present were under the impression that this injury was suffered from the match and were in shock. But in the coming days, information would come out that painted a darker picture of the fate of the wrestler. Around 2 p.m., hours before the event was to take place, the group, including Super Hate, entered the venue and went to their locker room. So it's before the show. We're it's not. We're not in Osaka, but we're somewhere near Osaka. Vudermir is at her own dress room, right? Oh, awesome! So I went. We usually, Japanese promotions usually get to the show three hours before, so a lot of guys, you know, uh, they usually have their own weight equipment and stuff. You have guys like Suzuki, who's like fucking stretching all the young boys. So I went down to the convenience outside to go to the convenience store. As I'm coming back, as I go to open the door, the door swings open and it's, it's Hirai holding his, holding his face like this. 
I walk into the dressing room, all the, all the Japanese boys are wiping the walls down, all the blood. Wow. Yeah, there was blood all over the seat. I mean, it was, it was, it was bad, right? So, the show starts, Hirai is on right before me, right? He does his match. So I'm back, like there's a curtain, whatever, and his match is done. You know, I'm doing my squats, pushing up, just, you know, stretching and stuff. He finishes his match, <clears throat> sits down, pukes, then goes into convulsions. Yeah. Yeah. Ambulance had to come pick him up. And I think now he's, uh, he's like a permanently brain dead. Wow. So that, that shows the dangers of performing while having a concussion. Yeah. Because I see it like he's permanently, like he, he he's like a, has to be like taken care of the rest of his life. Where was he in the pecking order? Because Taru was the leader of Voodoo Madness, wasn't he? Yeah. Taru could be heard shouting, bring me a metal pipe, which prompted many try and find out what was happening. But by the time they were able to get to Harari, he had been pummeled. Many wrestlers were said to have come in and break it up, but were not named in the press. When this was finally broken up and Harari had been saved from whatever was happening, he had sustained an incredible amount of damage. His face was said to be deformed, bloody, and he was unable to stand. Keep in mind that, th that he then cleaned himself up and performed in a wrestling bout. He was probably bad off before that, but it possibly only made his injury worse by wrestling immediately after. Super Hate would have permanent damage due to the attack that caused him to suffer a stroke that day. I don't know what the fight was over. No, but I, I, can't find, I can't find out about that. <laughs> yeah. But Taru, man, like, because Taru, I was in the match with Taru, right, and I remember Taru like, screaming at him, like, because he felt bad, right? And then during the match, Taru just, he, he didn't tag in, no emotion. You could tell that. Because, I mean, listen, uh, sometimes, especially in any, you get in a fight. Oh, yeah. Right? It happens. Yeah. But you don't want a guy, you don't want to fuck up a guy to the point where he's, you know what I mean? No, you want to teach him a lesson, but you don't want to permanently yeah. injure someone because right. you feel like a piece of shit. Taru held a press conference the next day where he was quick to say that he was the one who attacked Harari, but was too excited to remember if anyone else attacked with him. He also said that he had thrown several punches, but that was all and he deeply regretted this, and it also reconciled with Harari before he went out for the match that day and before he collapsed. Taru proclaimed that he would step away indefinitely from wrestling and was fined 300,000 yen or 2,100 USD. Many absolutely hated this press conference as they said Hiroi's face was far too deformed to have just taken some punches from Taru and didn't believe his notion that he attacked alone and couldn't remember due to the excitement. It all just rang very hollow in such a serious situation. Rumors swirled about the reason for the attack being everything from money to disagreements to mishandling a charity fund to of course something to do with the Yakuza, but a concrete motive hasn't yet been given to the public. In the fallout of the voodoo murder situation, several things would change in the world of all Japan. It probably goes without saying the voodoo murders were immediately disbanded and a lot of talent were dropped who could have had ties to the situation. And Taru got fired. And that's what, yeah, that's what led to uh, Muda stepping down. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, Voodoo Mayor's obviously, um, did it last long much after this, or was it? No, it was done after that. Done. Done, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was, but that, that really, that really shows the danger of if you have head trauma or concussion, you gotta let yourself heal. Mm. You know what I mean? So I, I just all the concussions I've gotten where I didn't take time off, I was back in the ring. You know, like I know, I know I have CT. Like if it's not yet developed, it's gonna, you know, there's no way I can. So when I mentioned that to you, you seemed really surprised. So how much was it kept hush hush then during your time there? I think it actually got into, um, I think the, the sports, the sports papers and the newspapers got the story. I mean, they couldn't hide it. They couldn't hide it. 
because the guy, the guy is permanently like mentally disabled now, right? Yeah. So they had to make some statements. So I know a, a lot of a lot of senior officials were were pissed at Muda just the way he handled it or whatever, right? I know it was a big thing, but then again, I'm not Japanese, so I didn't know the whole. How much uh, that incident affect all Japan in general? Was it like a really negative effect after that? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it didn't help, but you know, time heals all wounds. Mm. You know, people forget about shit after a while. But yeah, it wasn't. A, Taru, Taru got a lot of heat. Taru has never been with the major company since. No. Yeah, he he got, he got blacklisted for about a good three four years after that. What many did not expect was this was what ended the Muda era of All Japan. He would step down as president as a result of how many views his handling of the situation and his reputation took a downturn in many eyes for several years. In turn, All Japan as a whole finally began to see a big downturn in business after this. They had just been hanging on well with Muda at the helm, but this situation seemed to be the final straw with many. All Japan has struggled in recent years, but those struggles gave way for the latest chapter of this story. When the pandemic began, All Japan struggled to get in more talent and Sawama brought in the voodoo murderers for a return, Taru included. Taru had not been totally gone from the wrestling space over the years, but many thought he would never rejoin All Japan, especially forming the voodoo murderers once again, but this is what is happening. Ferrari never wrestled again and will always be dealing with the effects of this attack.